This podcast is brought to you by Place Pros, commercial and investment real estate. And Nicotour.boutique, your one stop shop for everything cool. Parker, it is amazing yes. to meet you. It's so nice to meet you too. Yes, I'm I have excited. heard so much about you. Really? Yes, around town. <laughs> Hope it's good. Yes, it's all good. I mean, Aww. one, you're gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you for that. Two, you are the reigning pageant queen of yes. Miss Universe, Miss TCP. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yep. And then, of course, your uh, Parker Foundation for Autism. <sighs> That's my heart. It, it, I mean, it's you guys are doing amazing things thank and you. really getting the word out there. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Amazing. And you have a fun party every year, too, right? We do, yep. Sunday on the River. Sunday on the yep. River. We just had our second annual in our backyard right yeah. on the river, and it's been amazing. So very, very thankful for, oh my gosh, our community and our sponsors and supporters just have the best people behind us, but that's what it's all about. Absolutely. So yeah. how did that get started? The Parker Foundation? Yeah. Like, how yeah. does one go about just being like, this is my cause yeah. and yeah, I'm going for it? Isn't that something, I just feel like it's something inside of you that speaks to you that you're meant for to do more. Yeah. And that's where uh, Ted and I were at. So we knew we wanted to do more. Brendan had been diagnosed. He went through the Scott Center. He made good progress, but then they age out of the Scott Center for autism and FIT. So that's early intervention. It's ABA therapy. That's one of the routes that uh, children around here in Brevard County can take. Okay. And we just knew we wanted to do more, but we found there was a lack of resources. You know, I have another child, um, a daughter who's a couple years younger than Brendan, easy to find things for her to do right right yes not so easy for our kiddos on the spectrum right so just felt like we really didn't belong or have a fit and ted and i were both uh avid athletes and i loved art and you know being a part of a team was so important to me as a kid i was an air force brat and Ah. so every year year and a half i was going to a new school and the way Ah. that i kind of got through that was jumping on you know a team a soccer team you know, softball team, yeah. uh, just joining a group to be a part of. And that's not always easy for our kids that are on the spectrum. Right. So that's what we really wanted to do. And that's where we knew we had a fit. So to be able to join forces with our community and existing resources and build them. Yeah. Build them. yeah. So you guys do like little events all yeah. throughout the year. Yes, year year long we do, and it's free sports, arts, and education that's amazing. for kids. We do safety initiatives too, like right now we're doing swimming on the spectrum, wow. and that's specifically for kids that are at high risk for drowning because it's the number one cause of death for um, kids with autism. They're drawn to water, they mm-hmm. elope, they don't have a fear. That fear factor yeah. is not necessarily within them. They're impulsive, and so they just find themselves in water and then unable they to can't swim you know a lot of them have sensory issues too so right. um, we work right now with the special olympics so my son is a great swimmer wow and he's on the special olympic swim team and after yeah. 2020 we were trying to find a new home for this program mm-hmm. and they were nice enough to let us use the shallow end of their pool and we have a trained um swimming professional that works with us Mm -hmm. and he has a daughter with autism so he's really in tune to our children and the sensory issues that they have or the impulsive nature and he's very just calm and relaxed and he works with our kids to help them learn how to swim that's wonderful is there an age range for that everything we do right now is from like age four is where we start okay and then we go up to 22 but I keep pushing that back because my son's almost 18 he'll be 18 this oh, year wow. yeah so we just keep kind of expanding and we follow the school board so 22 is um, when our kids with uh, special needs can continue to get um, services through that time oh wow yeah okay yeah that's really good to know um, yeah. isn't, isn't autism the most uh, the behavioral thing that's the most uh growing in the u.s yeah. if not i don't know if globally yeah it was one statistic? in 36 yes uh, one but 36. i was just talking to my friends at the brevard autism coalition and we were talking about what those statistics might be now and it's their uh feeling like it could be more in the one in uh 20s because it used to yeah. be like one in 150 it was and when brendan was diagnosed it was one in 110 
Wow. So, yeah, very what short amount of time. What do you think is happening there? Do you think it is just being diagnosed more or do you think it's like air pollution? Combination of everything. That. I really do feel like environmental effects, obviously, yeah. are really, and we're getting more in tune to that. And we know here in America, like even the foods that we eat, oh like, my gosh. you know, I know, in other countries, and this is really coming to a head, a lot of the chemicals and things that we put in our foods yep. are not even allowed in other countries. Yes, the dyes. You know, exactly. Number 40. Yes. Yeah. And it's not just... Um, um, autism, you know, it's ADHD, it's OCD, yes. it's anxiety, it's a, you know, sensory processing. So even if your kiddo doesn't fall in the autism spectrum, there's a lot of times when they could be having these other effects that are happening. Yeah, and I think we're seeing a growth in those as well. Yeah, yeah. I know. I read about that all the time. Even like mm -hmm. a like a vitamin D deficiency can Correct. throw you off balance. And our kids are inside a lot more. They don't get yeah. out as much, <laughs> you know <laughs> exactly. what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Different times, you know, but I think this is just a time of evolution for us on many, many levels. Yes. So, you I know, when too. we have difficulties like this, you know, in society, you know, it's just time for growth. Yeah. Do you think there's anything to be done about like the food? I mean, obviously, I feel like we need to uh, just get out there with our legislative team, you know, and, and tell them that this is not. Right. Yeah, this I think there needs to right. be a revolution there. Right. Absolutely. But how does one start that? I mean, yeah. Talk I, to your legislators. Talk Demand to your legislators. it. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of people out there that are signing petitions. And then you have to have skilled people that aren't afraid to go in front of your local you know, legislators and be able to, to speak with them because they're there to listen to you. Yes. You know, yeah. So, I think you having your background too, I mean, you could be like mm -hmm. an amazing leader for that or for even yeah. someone like me who, who questions like, how am I supposed to do anything about the food right. that we feed um, our kids? But mm -hmm. so it's really nice to have you in our community. Oh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> I think too, just educating yourself, yeah. you know, and not eating as many processed foods. And let me tell you what, <laughs> having two active teenagers and working and having a business and the Parker Foundation, it's hard. Believe me, convenience is so uh, easy. I know I've cut yeah. out fast food from our household. Yeah. I mean, we might visit once or twice a year, but yes. I mean, growing up, we would go like once or twice a week, yep. right? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so things are different Absolutely. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you do have a business on the side, uh, the do. screening business. Yeah. So it's Precision Screening, and it's actually a background screening company because Ted has a um, staffing company. So IT Staffing and Solutions, it's Revolution Technologies. Oh, wow. And so after, I'm still a registered nurse. Right. And I keep my license active. I always will. And I utilize that now as a community leader, you know, for autism. That's really great. But uh, in my spare time, and it's kind of nice because I have a lot of flexibility, I just help clear people or do tenant screenings. So it's just a very small business. It's me and my brother, actually, I oh, employ. Really? Yeah, and we do it together. Yep. And it's very flexible. So, so. what does that entail? Like you, you mm -hmm. do background checks, yep. make sure they're just a good candidate. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can do you, can you take on other clients besides your sure. husband's thing? Yeah. I mean, his obviously his company is is uh, it's nationwide, it's worldwide, you know, wow. so it does keep me pretty busy. Okay. But yes, I can. <laughs> you just don't need to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's great, though. Yeah. Now, did you grow up here? You said you were um, in the military family. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I would say junior high is when my dad was actually transferred to Patrick Air Force Base. Mm -hmm. And then he worked here. We lived at Patrick Air Force Base. And then I went to Satellite High. And that's where I met my husband, Ted. Really? Yeah. Yep. And then my dad retired here. And this has been home base. And pretty okay. much everyone in our family has moved down here. So this was your last move? This was it, yeah. That's really great. Mm -hmm. And were you guys uh, high school sweethearts or did you just We dated start out a as little friends? bit. We went to homecoming oh, and that's really cute. Um, but it was our senior year and we decided that, you know, he was going to go to UCF and I was going to go to uh, Brevard Community College, which is now Eastern Florida. Yes. And I so loved BCC. Yeah. Yeah, I took it classes. Was great. It was amazing. Yeah. They also had like a really good summer program for kids. Mm -hmm. Now I'm struggling to find like all the pieces oh. around town. Yep. Um, but yeah, I used to love BCC. Yeah. And then your husband was a, he was a varsity player. What, yep. what did he, he play? He played football and tennis. Oh, wow. Yep. And then played it at UCF as well. So you guys separated for the separated. four years? It was actually 13 years. So yeah, it was 13 years. It was kind of a crazy story. So 13 years later, I'm working over in Orlando. My sister was going to UCF. So we rented a house together and I had a lot of friends over there and just need one, needed to get out of Brevard County for a little yeah, bit. I could hear you know that. what I mean? Yeah. yeah so I went over there <laughs> and I was working as a nurse um, at um, Florida Hospital mm -hmm. and 
one night I had to work 11 to 7 shift and for some reason I just felt like I needed to go to the gym so got to hit the LA fitness before my 11 to 7 shift which never happened that never oh. happened before so I just felt like I needed to go and sure enough I'm on the treadmill and I'm doing my workout and I feel this guy next to me kind of looking at me and I'm like what's going on <laughs> I think this guy's <laughs> gonna talk to me you know but I had like I was just not about it that zone. night yeah. I had a lot on my mind and he was persistent and no uh, and then uh, came With to find out yeah just well he then he's like hey I think you're you know I think I know you I think you're you know Missy Brooks and I'm like yeah, I am. Who are you? you didn't <laughs> it had been 13. Him? You know, like I said, I just had my blinders yeah, on and yeah. I just wasn't oh my like God, that's crazy. out of nowhere. There he was. But the funny thing about it was the night before, and if you believe in bigger things, which I totally do, the night before I was talking to my sister and I said, you know, I wonder whatever happened to that guy, Get Teddy Parker town. from high school. Because when he took me to homecoming, my dress ripped. So getting out of the car, my dress oh ripped. My and he had to take me all the way home. I had to change a dress and then um, take me back to the to homecoming, you know, where the event was happening. Yeah. And I just thought that he had handled that so well. Yeah. Uh, but for some reason, out of nowhere, it, it just, just came out. in your head. Yeah. And I then believe there in he stuff was. like that, too. See, you, I mean... <laughs> That's crazy. Right. That's when you know things are aligning. Exactly. Wow. Yep. So I had an hour talk on the treadmill. Yeah. That makes the workout go by quick. <laughs> yeah, it did. I'm like, we've been here for an hour. Do you usually work out this long? And I'm like, I got to go to work, so I, I'm going to have to tell you goodbye. But anyway, we exchanged numbers, and then the rest is history. Wow. Yeah. Kind of cool, right? Amazing. Yeah. yeah, that is kind of freaky, though. How it he, like, is. just popped in your head and then I know. popped right in front of you. I know. Ooh, yeah. that's cool. Mm -hmm. How long was your courtship from there? Did you guys get married uh, pretty quickly? It was pretty after quick. That? Yeah, yeah, we were married within a year. Yeah. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. And then yep. you guys had two kids. Yep, we had Brendan pretty much right away because his dad was actually not doing well. He had brain cancer, so he had been battling cancer since he had retired from Harris. Oh, wow. So that's kind of, yeah, that's rough. Yeah. So, um, and Ted is the youngest of nine, and he has two brothers, and neither one of them had kids. So Ted, oh. he has lots of sisters, they've had lots of kids, but no one to carry on the Parker name. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we, luckily we got pregnant right away and had Brendan, and his dad got to help Brendan before he oh, passed that's away. That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's great. And then you have a daughter too. Yep, yep, Carson. Yep, Carson. she's 14, almost 15. How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> good, yeah, she's a challenge. She's a lot like dad, actually. She's really? a great negotiator. She's gonna be a good little business. Wonderful. Woman one day, yep. yep. Uh, but she's an MCC cheerleader. She's actually Ooh. at camp right now, uh, working with the, the littles for oh, their cheer great. camp. Yep, yeah, volunteering. I'm volunteering. I'm taking my kid to the satellite one. Oh, good. Where they, yeah, they'll take mm -hmm. the high schoolers and, yeah. and do a little camp with them. Yep, yep. That's fun yep. and a good way to build responsibility. Yep, <laughs> yep. She loves it. She's like, I get all of my community service hours for the year oh, in one week. Oh, it counts. <laughs> that's perfect. Doing what she loves. That's, and that's what great. it's all about, you know. It really is. Yeah, it's community yeah. service all mm -hmm. the way. Right. Great. Mm -hmm. And driving? Almost. Now, she did break her foot recently Ooh, that's <sighs> tough my husband broke his foot earlier she's this in a year. boot and she's scooting yep. around and she's on the craft table which she's not happy about because she's a dancer and she right. wants to be teaching those girls how to dance yeah. yeah so she's like mama i gotta do the art Oh, I'm not looking art forward is to fun. it. It's fun for me. <laughs> yeah. Do you do it often? I know I've seen yeah. you poke around Derek's uh, studio. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, I've always been a lover of art. When I went to uh, Satellite, my last two classes in my senior year were art. You know, so yes. I kind of took that. And I wanted to be a fashion designer. That was what I really wanted to do. Had that talk with my dad, and he wasn't about it. So uh, oh, really? nursing it was. There was also, <laughs> like, because I poked around that, too. Mm -hmm. There was a lack of schools that actually specialized in that in Florida. And we were doing, mm -hmm. like, the Florida prepaid. So mm -hmm. I was like, these are my choices. Right. Um, yeah. I think there was one. Maybe, was it Flagler that offered fashion design I'm not sure I had my heart set on going to New York City at Parsons that's what I wanted yeah, to do yeah <laughs> and he's like sorry sis that's Aww. not happening <laughs> but you I got know. your nursing but the cool thing about life is no matter and I think this is what keeps you young is that you don't have to stop you can continue learning I know. listen I have a big birthday this year and I'm just getting started so if I, I ever that. wanted to go back and be that fashion designer you know 100%. Vera Wang started at 40 yeah. yes right so yeah I yeah. always have that in the back of my 
head too. Right. And it's like, you know, life is about reinventing yourself. It is. That's you what know? keeps it fresh. Yes. Yes. You so never have to. with the pageantry, yeah. has that been, I mean, were you always a pageant kid or did that happen yeah. later in life? So I used to sing and dance as a kid and I lived in South Carolina okay. and pageants were big in the South. Yes. Still are. So that's my mom had me in it and I loved it. Loved you being did. on stage. And then it came time for being kind of a preteen and I got really nervous on stage. This is when you oh, have to really? start speaking on stage, you know, and it yeah. was more about starting to talk about service work, you yeah. know, or with different things. And I just had a really hard time with that. I was a shy kid and just had a difficult time and my parents were like I think you're done with this you know you're more into sports let's just focus on that mm -hmm. so kind of hit a little seed was planted in my mind like I I had a difficult time with public speaking like this is not good for me I would get really nervous about it so I think a seed was planted and later in life that sticks with you that kind of you identified with, you. with it it really yeah okay and then so as a nurse and trying to get you know different um, upper level positions mm -hmm. I had a really challenging time with the public speaking yeah and, and like advocating evident. for yourself right and so that's not going to work if you want to be a manager you know I made it to a certain mm -hmm. level in management but I could never get past that point yeah so then Brennan was born got more I had my little desk job at home you know mm -hmm. with my screening business and so that was always there and I always struggled with a little bit of social anxiety too and yeah. I, I think a lot of that was just being the new kid in school all the you time know, all the time yeah and being a shy kid and also like I'm sure pageantry mm -hmm. you know you get envy you get the mean girls yeah, saying you like you know yeah yeah you definitely can but I think as a missus it's a little bit different and you always put service at the forefront as a missus that's, so I yeah, feel like good. when you're coming from that place I've Instead never really of the had to deal exactly. Uh, I have never really had to deal with that. I've had a lot of support, and I think that's why I stuck with it. But the reason why I really got into it, a friend of mine, dear friend of mine, Joni Nathanson, we were playing tennis, and she said, "You know, Mel Melissa, I know exactly what you're doing. You know, for the autism community, I see you stepping up to be a community leader. Yeah. Why don't you get into pageantry?" I had no idea that a pageant pageants even existed for married women. And, but what okay. I did know was that you're going to have to do a lot of public speaking and I was scared to death. <laughs> How did you overcome that? So I overcame it because I told myself I was going to do this pageant and I'll tell you what, it wasn't easy, you know, and no. I did the best that I could, but every year, because you know, you commit to a system for a year yeah. and I said every year I'm going to do it again until I can get this because it's going to make me the community leader that I have to be. And I fought through it and Ted will tell you, this is the one of the, the things that he finds most intriguing, you know, that he loves about me was that I just conquered that fear. I yeah. made it, you know, that I want to be out there. I want to help these families like my own. I want to make them feel like a part of their community, like they belong. Yeah. And so this is something that I definitely want to speak about. And I want to be able to get out there and have these conversations and be in front of a, yeah. you know, a crowd, a crowd and be able to do this. Oh my so gosh. That was, you know, so it was all about Did, that. Was it just practicing? It was or practicing. Was it just it's like just like anything else. Gusto. I heard someone else say this recently, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. You know, it's just like uh, sports or anything like that. You've got to practice. Right. So the more you talk and the more you get out there um, and you have these conversations, the better it's going to be. Yeah. But if you stop doing it, you know, you can start to build up that anxiety right. again. Right. So you really and have to make yourself do it. And it's those seeds that you know, someone mm -hmm. might plant on you. I mean, those are the things that you know you have to overcome mm -hmm. and you have to conquer. Right. So right. kudos to you. Thank you. But yeah, any yeah. fear, you just have to face it, you right? You have to face it. You do. I mean, I even took classes. I went back to Eastern Florida. So it was Eastern Florida at that time, but I took a speech class. Yes. You know, I just powered through it, made myself do it, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah the, that's one of the classes in college that I wish I would have taken, but I never did yeah. because I was on an art course and right it's like, who needs that well, yeah everybody does <laughs> yeah well just so you know you can take any classes that you want at eastern florida you can just audit them yeah yeah you don't have to do it necessarily for credit or anything yeah. like that so anything you want to I mean, do that's you can what do. like um you know older people would show up at like my mm -hmm. art history classes at bcc right. mm -hmm. and i would be like that's gonna be me in 40 years <laughs> <laughs> and why not <laughs> and why not i don't know yeah. i just never looked into f uh eastern for that but yeah, you're saying yeah. that they're it's available. growing a lot yeah. yeah and you can definitely do that you can mm -hmm. audit any classes you want hey you're gonna pay for that. it though yeah take yeah i'll take your money <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what did you learn there that like helped you besides like mm -hmm. you know do you have any tips 
besides actually going out there and trying it and doing it? You know, just think uh, breathing exercises are really good. Okay. So doing different breathing exercises, learning meditation, Mm -hmm. also physical activity is huge. Yes, I agree. So a lot of people will actually do a workout before they have to go out there on stage because it eats up a lot of that nervous energy. You're too tired to have the, yeah. 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 I've I've started doing HIIT workouts around Mm -hmm. uh, COVID time. And before that, I did no workouts. And Mm -hmm. I was really impressed of how much, like, my anxiety and my nerves levels Mm -hmm. you conquer that in the morning and Mm -hmm. you're good to go for the rest of the day day. yeah Yeah. it's so important it is Mm -hmm. exercise diet Mm -hmm. all of it yeah all right well you brought your crown here today it is gorgeous can i oh go for it yeah look at this you guys it's heavy yes it's padded i've never seen a crown uh a pageant crown up close they look so big and heavy and beautiful in the pictures there's yeah. a T here. Yep. Um, <laughs> can you talk about the organization? Sure, absolutely. So it's Universe TCP, and we compete in Atlanta every year. And this is a very platform-based system. So depending, right. there's lots of systems out there. You just have to find the right one. So if you're more about the glam and the fashion, there's one out there for you. Okay. You know, and there's some that are a blend of both. Mm-hmm. But um, this one is a blend of both, but it's highly um, platform oriented. That means service oriented. Right. And so you get to blend their platform with your platform, which is really cool. So theirs is the Pledge Campaign Foundation Against Domestic Violence. Yes. So I think that um, this is very important. It's a difficult topic to talk about right but it's very very important so, the so mon- they picked mm-hmm. that not not necessarily correct. you okay correct so the pageant a lot of pageants have their own organization service based okay. organization and we'll ha- help raise money and awareness for them sure and then we do a big service project when we're up in atlanta we visited one of the um homes for young women that that's have been really through nice. yeah that's domestic a hard violence thing and to are finding a safe haven break away from it really is and so we have a moment to be able to talk about and break down barriers because a lot of us see they see us come in with our crowns and sashes you know and they have preconceived notions of Absolutely. what we're going to be about you know and i'll tell you what you get the women from <laughs> europe and Asia and everybody together and we're all in there together we were singing and dancing Aww. by the end of the of the day and it was just a beautiful experience yeah you know and we bring them gifts oh, and, really um, nice. and give them hope that's what it's about you know it's yeah. about hope for them building that and I'm sure you had like deep conversations with them it was very deep what did you learn about that and you know the situations that they're you know, in because it can be anyone yeah <laughs> Yes. It could be anyone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't discriminate. Yeah. You know, no. everybody has issues, you know, and problems that they're going through. Yeah. And this is something that many families face, and we just don't usually talk about it, you know. But right. I think we're in that evolutionary period, like we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. where we need to talk about this stuff because this is how real change is going to happen and it's going to happen from the bottom up in our families yes you know where we can start making these changes so the pledge campaign has her pledge his pledge the kids pledge and the pet pledge you know and it's all about just being kind and also for women raising the bar knowing that we have the power to choose who loves us yeah you know and there is help out there Mm -hmm. for kids it's about um you know, saying kind words so that kind words come back to you. Yes. Keeping it simple at that point. For men, it's about stepping up. If you if see, something, see something, say something. Yeah. And set the example for other men so that they know that this is unacceptable. Right. Right. So I've got to introduce this um, to our families in the autism community because oh, wow. I feel like we're at higher risk. We're, we have more financial stressors than a lot of families out there. You know, added yeah. um, issues. We have behavioral issues that most people, we don't really talk about. You know, the behind the scenes we do as a group community together because we feel safe and able to do that. Yeah. I'm able to do that in my mom's group that I just started with a couple of other moms. Um, oh. So it's a resource for our moms to be able to come together and talk about these issues in a safe space, yeah. network together, and also to be able to learn some self-care tips, little bite-sized tips that we That's can take. That's super important. Because we get in those hot, heavy moments when things could happen, and you know we have to be able to know when it's time to step back, take a moment yes. for me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go hide in the closet. Take yep. a few deep breaths. Whatever you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Yes>. In there. <laughs> uh-huh. um, yeah. The autism thing. So 
yeah, I'm sure everybody at this point has a family member yeah. or a friend who is going through it. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that it was kind of like y you don't really talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's you want to be somewhere safe. Mm -hmm. But how can someone like me who does have a friend in that situation mm -hmm. doesn't I don't know quite how to support her or mm -hmm. help her. Um, and I just love the kid. I mean, mm -hmm. he's amazing. Yeah. What can I do? Yeah, how can I be, there, be for there for her? her and let her know, check in on her, see how she's doing. Okay. You know, if you're able to provide her with any respite, you know, where you could um, just watch the kiddo or you know help out for a couple yeah. hours. Listen, a couple hours is a big deal yeah. for just mom to get out and be able to have for a any moment. mom. Yeah, for any alone. mom, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, so uh, a lot of us just find child care because people don't necessarily understand the unique and special challenges. You know that our children are having to deal with right. and just don't know that they'll understand and that it's safe, you know? Right. So like I say, every child is different, you know, every child on the spectrum is different. Yeah. And so you can't, you know, you just have to kind of get to know them and see how you can help if you can or yeah. just be there for her, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here for Just you. show that you care. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do care. Um, but it, it wouldn't, you know, what can you say to maybe like a new sitter or something mm -hmm. to I mean you said everyone's everyone every child is different mm -hmm. um, but if you did want to hire someone to yeah. get your two hours is yeah. there something that they need to know or, yeah. or just be aware of or is it I just think a great way to kid? do that is just to have them over to spend some time with you beforehand that's a you good know? idea yeah. yeah so if you were if this is a you know someone that's gonna take care of your child you know, pay them to to come in and just spend the afternoon with you so they can see the nuances and different things that might happen and okay. you know or you know what to look out for okay um you know our a lot of our kids have triggers or things that might set them off or get them upset mm -hmm. and it's just sensory overload for them it is and so for us we have a large dog and we have a house that echoes so mm -hmm. when our dog barks because that's what dogs do yeah it scares me it's but for brendan he's told me that it hurts it hurts oh. his ears, you know, so trying to minimize those things. <laughs> yeah. You know, put the dog away if you know somebody's coming over. Right. Or, you know, just um, or get Brendan in more of a safe space, a quiet zone. Yeah. If he were to start barking and things like that. So those are just little things that you may want to share with them. OK. You know, and then keep the visits like if you were to go out and have to run some errands, keep them short at first, mm -hmm. you know, until the person gets to know, you know, your uh, your environment you more. know and your child yeah. yeah and then the child also needs to mm -hmm. um, get comfortable with the new adult exactly <laughs> yep 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 that's yeah. great and then I could also refer her to the foundation and absolutely and the things that you guys put on all the yeah. time absolutely so yep. you, you have a race coming up a be a buddy 5k in yeah. October mm -hmm. yes Tell uh -huh. me about that. Yep. So this is the seventh annual race, and the Running Zone manages the race for us. This is going to be at Space Coast Field of Dreams. The race starts at 8 o'clock. So we have the 5K. We have a free kids run. I'm also going to work so that we can get um, a an adaptive uh, award system. Oh, okay. So right now we just have awards, you know, for every age group, men, women, typical. Yeah. But we're going to have more of a neurodiverse um, field out there, which is really what I've wanted to grow to get people together. So some of our friends yeah. from the Special Olympics are going to be out there, and we have a young runner. Her name is Clara. She's amazing. Now listen, Clara can run. Yeah, she's, yeah. I believe she's 13. She's training for a triathlete uh, to be a triathlete. She's on the spectrum. Wow. She has another um, disorder as well, um, but she loves to run mm -hmm. but she wants to get up on that podium listen she has no problem winning in her age uh -huh. division but her mom did bring it to our attention that you know we do want to get more of those runners out there that or walkers that may just want you know for them it's a big deal just to get out there right and participate yeah you know we also want to be have them included as well so I'm, I'm working to try to find a way for us to celebrate those them. yes as well so what are your what do you have in mind well, right now we give out medals, you know, yeah. for our top. And so I'm going to speak with the running zone okay. to look at some other races that are out there and to see what we can do and how it would best fit right. where they're comfortable, you know, and where we can make it happen. Cool. Yeah. Now yeah. let's get a little superficial. I mm -hmm. love 
the way you dress and you put oh, yourself you. together. Where do you get your hair done? Where do you <laughs> shop? Let's talk about that stuff. Oh, I love it. Well, I love online shopping. That's one thing yes. I love to it's do. It's easy, right? right? Yeah, it is. But this is Coastal Bloom. Oh, so you know Coastal Bloom yes, and Stefania. Downtown Melbourne. Yep, love her. Love to it's watch. Beautiful. Hey, listen, when I'm there doing my background checks, I can put on her lives and listen and shop right as I'm oh, going. Oh, she does that? She does. Oh yeah, my gosh. she does lives and it's kind of a fun little thing so you have to so be you fast hit if a you want to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all it's right. It's a lot ladies. of fun. Yeah, so go check it out. It's a little yeah, little That's tip. Fun. Yeah, Coastal Bloom, on a Facebook, lot of fun. She does that. She has an app. Yep, and she oh. does it on Facebook, but the best way to shop is through the app. Okay. And it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of talking that happens and there's regulars <laughs> and there's fun. conversations okay yeah so and the stuff that you find is really unique because she travels around to find different things and it's very affordable too oh, great. very affordable That's so you gotta key. love that yes yeah so uh, absolutely love that and then my girl Reese Prospero mm -hmm. is amazing at hair and yes. I've worked with her for a while and she's got a place right here in EGAD okay yeah What's so, the name of the place? Or is well, it? she just runs out. It's her business. It's so it's bit. Reese Prospero. Oh, okay. And then she was with us at Sunday on the River, too. So for Sunday on the River, which is our fundraising event every April at our home, we have vendors. Wonderful. So a lot of local businesses are okay. out there. And Reese was out there, you know, doing hair and nice. talking to people and giving discounts to come see oh, her and wonderful. everything. Oh, yeah. I did see Shargood on your balcony. Oh, <laughs> yes. She knows how to work it she for really sure. She does. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Everyone loves her. So, and then yeah. I have seen um, Makeup by Darcy yep. and you do some yep. collabs. Yep. She's Absolutely. wonderful. Absolutely. She, she was there. Yep. Olivia Womack also yes. out there. Beautiful photographer. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amazing. And then Atlantic Beauty Clinic was another one. Um, she's up in Cape Canaveral. Okay. So she was out there as well. And so she's Wonderful. very good to me. So I wanted to mention Paige as well. Absolutely. Yep. Well, on that train of thought, mm -hmm. um, do you have anybody that you can think of mm -hmm. in Brevard that would be great to nominate mm -hmm. to sit in your chair next time? Ooh, absolutely. Tell I'm going to think about it, though. I feel okay. like I need to think about it. Yeah, yeah. Take a moment. Yeah. All right. Well, while you take a moment, okay. what about like restaurants? Where do you and your husband love to dine out? Yeah, so... Do date night and kid-friendly. Yeah, Let's well, we take our kids pretty much anywhere. So really? So they love... Oh, they're a little spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> and they like so it. So for Father's Day, we went to Yellow Dog. So that was my daughter yes. wanted to take him to Yellow Dog. That's nice. And so we did go there. And um, Chart House. Mm -hmm. And then recently, um, my husband purchased a Kiwi. So oh. Racket and Fitness Club. So he we've been did. doing a lot of uh, renovations there. I love that place. And we're set to open up the Palm restaurant there. Oh, And wow. so we've been renovating that heavily and hiring uh, new staff and a new chef. When and did you guys get it? In October. Okay, and it so it's And it needed a lot of love. Yeah. It's been here over 20 years. Yes, yeah, so we yes. Uh, were... I don't know if we actually went through with it, but we were mm -hmm. considering taking my daughter there for tennis mm -hmm. during the summer. Well, absolutely. Still yep. going on? Yeah. All oh, right. Absolutely. They have a great youth program there. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yep. We'll try that. And a summer July. camp. And mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, having a lot of fun. This is something Ted and I are doing together to help. That's so fun. You know, design it and refresh it. Yeah. And Because uh, it's a beautiful. It. Thank you. It really is. Uh, location. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to make it an adaptive tennis center, which is really fun. So I have a friend uh, that has love serving autism and she's connected to the USTA Florida Ooh. and she'll be coming up to train uh, all of our staff and volunteers and Wonderful. parents whoever wants to get trained to for adaptive tennis to be able to teach our kiddos oh, better great. teach our kiddos we've been doing it for years you know yeah. we've been having these events for years but you know really there's a great way to do it and she's got a system and visuals you know so gonna bring her in oh, to do that so great. that will be coming in the fall too. yes mm -hmm. and you guys can throw events there too right yeah, I sure feel like can. I went to a like a shower of some sorts there yeah once. Yep, yeah yep they hold there's a small banquet room which is about to get refreshed as well so you know wedding oh, wonderful receptions oh. different things yes. like that um and uh, in the past, we've had international women's tennis tournaments there. So we've been sponsors of wow. it, but now we'll be hosting it. Cool. Obviously. Yeah. So we're hoping like this to be now. able to bring it back because that was a great, great event. And that was pre COVID. So now, you oh, know, just okay. So COVID stopped it. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can get it back. 
I'm yeah. sure you can. You can do anything. That's <laughs> it's very exciting to have women from around the world, you know, Absolutely. here competing. Yeah. yeah. And tennis is big around here. It is big and pickleball is really big too. Yes. That <laughs> has been growing. I'm sure you've heard. Yes, I've so heard. So added some pickleball course. That was the first really? thing we did at Kiwi. What a wonderful idea. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. So what else do we not know about you? Any other hobbies or interests? Yeah, I think, um, you know, really the only thing is, I, like I said, I love art and being able to incorporate that with our families and in, also introduce them to our artists that we have here. We've got amazing artists we here. Do. And we had a Peace of Mind um, event at Derek Gore's gallery last year, and it was so amazing. Yes. In the daytime, we had our kids come in and work with the different artists um, hands-on. So they got to make little mini people, uh, oh, collage great. people with Derek. And then, um, you know, I mean, Kristen Maslow was out there, Nikki Nicole, Eric E. Science, um, Cody Monahan. Wow. So Cody Monahan made this amazing handprint, had the kids do handprint on a large canvas, and then mm -hmm. came back later that evening with this John Lennon uh, painted on it. Wow. Yeah. And oh my it gosh. said, imagine all the people. Yeah. And I love that. Like, it just that meant so much about bringing people together, which is like, really what we try to do is try to offer something for for, for everyone. everyone yeah, yeah. Not all kids love sports you know right um, some love dancing some love art so whatever it is I just want to be able to connect make those connections because once wonderful. I make those connections then the walls and the barriers are broken down and, yeah and then they can be more readily you know involved into the typical yeah. activities and one connection that are out there. brings mm -hmm. two and, and and you know all of a sudden you have a whole community behind you mm -hmm. Now, when you do art, do you, I mean, I know it's probably hard for a mom mm -hmm. to, to take time for herself, but yeah. do you paint or do you draw? So what I do recently is um, um, one of the moms, <laughs> so I used to do uh, these events for our school. So we had a gala at the Ooh. Catholic school the kids go would go to. And one of the moms said, you know, could anyone do this? It was a mosaic of the Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I, I think I could do that. You know, so I Googled. With you know, tiles? mosaic and everything with tiles. Wow. And knocked one out and it sold for over a thousand dollars, which was amazing. Oh my god. And so that was like, yeah, that was my very first um, stab at it. But then I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And the kids and I so I work with the kids and the the kids love doing it. Yeah, mosaic. And it's fun. very like they just sit there and even kids with that are nonverbal, doesn't matter. Yeah. They sit down, they get to work, they focus, they absolutely love it. I can't get them away from it. That's wonderful. So now we've been making these American flags. That is like our thing. We can do anything. We've done several different things. We've done sea turtle. We've done um, a mom and a baby giraffe. When Temple Grandin came to visit, we gifted her that oh, wow. um, back at the Brevard Zoo when they had, uh, the, it was their safari event that they had and she was one of the special cool. guests. So had that, but the American flags are great and they sell anywhere between 800 to 1500 we do coastal types um yeah. so with so each one is different and where unique. do you have these available or are so they so i make a couple of them a year with the kids usually okay. like two to three a year okay and then for whatever big event we're doing we auction it off and 100 percent of the proceeds Wonderful. either go to the parker foundation or we've also um, done things for girls inc um, different schools so these flags because I'm a title holder and I, I love yes. pageants and everything um, they've gone with me to different locations oh, wow. around the United States and so diff they're in different homes across the oh, United wonderful. States yeah but it's such a great way to show the world what our kids are capable of yeah and to talk about you know America how it should be and all of yes. us together with our differences you know united Absolutely. Um, so we talk a lot about that and then, uh, yeah, just make these beautiful pieces of art. And hopefully one day, what I'd love to do is have my own um, gallery yeah. and workspace. That's what I was going to say. And have an employee our kiddos. So oh. actually give them jobs. That they can sort. I mean, there's a, a lot of jobs they can do. And the money that these actually go for, you know, could yes. be utilized to pay them and to carry on the art program. You know, oh, I can't wait to see one. We're always looking for unique and different ways to help our kids, you know, because they need yeah. purpose. Like after they're out of school, it's really difficult to find something for them. This is something that yeah. I'm hearing more and more. My moms that are 
uh, have kids over 18 mm -hmm. and young adults and adults. And Brandon's 18 now. He's almost 18. So okay. we're going through that whole transition. We have yeah. to become guardians for him. So okay. that's what it has. It's a big deal. Uh, yeah. So absolutely. going through a new transition. And then, like I said, they get to stay with the school system for a certain amount of time. But after that, they're adults. And then trying to find the right fit for them to have something to do so that they have purpose. Yes. You know, these yeah. kids are, they, you know, they learn a little differently and they, you know, uh, but, but, they, but they are valuable and they have a lot of, you know, great skills and everything. Yeah. So, you know. Okay. Yeah. So that's next mm -hmm. <laughs> for you and your family. Yes. What can't you do? How are you at cooking? <laughs> I love to cook. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Yeah. You're a good cook. I love to cook. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Ted loves to cook too. So that's kind of his thing. He loves to cook on yeah. the weekends. Nice. But weeknights, it's for me. So, what is your specialty? Um, being from the South, I love a good brunch. Yeah. So, yes. So, if you haven't had grits that you actually like, What's I can, you can I can usually grits. turn the Northerners into, into loving yeah, grits. I love grits. Yeah. Yeah. Cheesy grits. Cheesy grits. Gotta love it. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Melissa, it was mm. so nice meeting you. Yes. Have you thought of any nominees? I'm going to think on think it. Think about it and let yes, us know. I absolutely will. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in yeah, and um, educating it. us. And yeah, we look forward lovely. to everything you have to oh, offer the community. I appreciate, community. It. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Melissa. Yes. To be a sponsor or nominate a guest, hit us up on Instagram at local underscore celebrity underscore Brevard. Until next time, goodbye.